One of my all-time favorite weekend activities is to find a really cool antique shop. really cool things in antique shops, you guys. And everything that I found, I found at a price that I'll be able to resell it at. And these all have some really incredible histories and stories to them. I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. I'm gonna show you the incredible things that I ended up finding. The minute I got to this antique shop, I started kind of going through some of the shelves and I saw this really cool little box down on the bottom shelf. It would have been really easy to just overlook. And I'm really glad that I decided to open this box and see what was inside. But one of the things that I noticed about this box right away is that it has a Bakelite handle to it. Anytime you can find an old looking box like this with a Bakelite handle, it usually means that something inside is also gonna be made of Bakelite. Bakelite was this incredible new invention in the 1920s that was one of the first synthetic materials that they used to make things out of. And they used it for jewelry, they used it for radios, they used it for handles. Basically all of the things that we use just regular plastic for now, they used Bakelite in the 1920s and it was used all the way up until the 1950s. It's got really rich colors and you can see like swirls in it and it's just something that you don't see that often anymore. So when I saw this handle made out of Bakelite, I immediately wanted to know what was inside. And when I opened the box, you guys, bling, they only wanted $35 for this set. These are Bakelite poker chips and there are hundreds and hundreds of these poker chips in here. These are the real deal, you guys. Look at the swirl detailing on this. You can see all the little swirls in there. That's what you want in Bakelite. That's what people really love and people really love the butterscotch Bakelite. So that's this color here and it's got a lot of these butterscotch Bakelite chips. What's really cool about this though is you open up this like secret compartment and guess what? There's more Bakelite chips inside. A set like this would go anywhere from $150 to $300. For this to be one of the first finds of the day, like it just sets me in such a good space. Now I'm like, I'm ready to go and like take on this antique shop. I'm gonna find the coolest things here on the bottom of every shelf. Very, very exciting. So I'm kind of like wandering from booth to booth. And of course there's just a huge variety of different things in antique shops. And it is difficult to find things at a price that you're gonna be able to resell them at. And the next thing that I found was super cool. I know you guys give me a hard time about the toasters, but I love toasters. I just love vintage toasters. There's just something really cool about some of the older toasters. You can find some really amazing Art Deco toasters, some toasters from like the 40s and the 50s. There's a reason people are willing to pay a lot of money for these things because they don't make them like they used to. Isn't that uh, what they say? You guys, this is a Sunbeam T20B toaster. So that means that this actually dates from the early 1950s. So you can find the T20 without any letter after it. You can find the T20A, T20B, T20C. Depending on what number and what letter you find, you're actually gonna be able to date your toaster. So this particular toaster would have been made from 1952 to 1957. And that is like a very long time ago to have a toaster that still looks Amazing. They only wanted $15 for this. These things go anywhere from $100 to $500. If you can find one of these in really beautiful condition, maybe it's been restored or maybe it's just never been used, it's gonna go for a lot of money. This particular one is in really good condition. I do think somebody probably rewired it at some point because this would have originally had a cloth covered cord. For $15, you guys, that's like an amazing deal for something like this. This. The next booth that I found had a ton of really cool vintage military stuff. What I did see that they also had was this incredible brass lantern. This is actually a Stonebridge folding lantern. These were made in the early 1900s and they were used during World War I. So these were used in the field. They were used by the medics that needed light in the night to try to find wounded soldiers out on the battlefield. These things are really cool and the history with them is actually really amazing. Now, they originally would have been made out of a tin metal and they would have had like a silver coloring to them. So you just put a candle right inside. There's these wires that would hold your candle in place and you could move around and your candle stays put. But then when you weren't using it, it breaks down into this like really small, 
thing and you can like store it. It's kind of incredible. After World War I, they started making these things just as camping gear. So the Boy Scouts would use them. It was used as just your general camping lantern at the time. And since then we started using gas lanterns and stuff like that. I feel like this would still be really functional even as a camping lantern. This is a reproduction, so this isn't anything that would have been used in like World War I or anything like that, but it's still very cool. It's still super collectible. They only wanted $30 for it, and I'm like, I like this. I think it's super cool, so I'm gonna grab it. I kind of want to have like a dramatic moment, like put my candle in here and like wander through a forest somewhere. Like, does anybody else? No, that, okay. So I have literally had this weird fantasy in my mind where I'm like, I want to have like my bathroom area where I've got like Q-tips and mouthwash and all that kind of stuff, but you want it to look cool, right? So I always thought that I wanted to like put my mouthwash maybe in like old poison bottles. How cool is that, right? Chloroform bottle and poison bottle and you just drink your mouthwash out of a poison bottle. And so I finally found some really cool poison bottles. I started thinking about it and I'm like, how do you adequately wash a poison bottle? How do you get the chemicals out of the bottle before you put your mouthwash in it? And then you're just like drinking poison residue. I could die from this stupid idea. It, they're super cool. Like I actually still really like my idea. I don't know how realistic it is to have vintage poison bottles for functional drinking usage. I need to rethink this. So I go into the next booth and this person just has stuff everywhere. They have some really incredible, they call them Santos figurines or saint statues that are carved out of wood. And this booth had all kinds of these little Santos figures and they wanted a lot for the older ones, but I found one that I actually think is worth more than the older ones and it's incredible. You guys look at this thing. This is an amazing Santo statue of the Archangel Gabriel and this is incredible. The detailing on this thing is absolutely amazing. It's an amazing size. If you look at some of these pieces, everything is removable. So it's very easy for these things to just like get lost in time. Oh, nope, no more sword. He's like standing on <laughs> this devil. The devil is not having a good day at all. And he's just like, yeah, no, I'm just like holding my sword. Not even bothered by this little demon under my feet. A lot of these artists are gonna sign them. This one is signed on the bottom. They only wanted $65 for this, which is a really, really good price for something like this. So the next thing that I see, you guys, I was upset because I didn't end up getting this, but this is a really cool vintage fire helmet. I love vintage fire stuff, you guys. Like the old like hose nozzles and these old helmets and like old fire hydrants and different like fire memorabilia I think is really very cool. They wanted a hundred dollars for this, which really isn't a bad price if you're going to collect something like this. The company that makes this has a really cool history. This is made from a company called Cairns and they have been making these fire helmets since the 1800s. This company was founded by two brothers that were actually making badges. So they, they made badges for a living, little badges for shirts and hats. These fire helmets would all have a badge on the front so that you could tell what fire station different people were from. And they are the ones that came up with the technology to have these clasps and have these badges stick to the helmet. So it's like this whole hook situation and you can put different badges on these helmets. And they came up with this technology. So in the mid 1800s, they actually got into the fire helmet industry and they started developing these fire helmets. And I really love the look of these particular fire helmets, but unfortunately it was just a little bit too much money. But I'm glad I got to show it to you guys because it's super cool. So I was going through this shelf and the next thing that I found was this incredible vintage hood ornament. You guys, I love vintage hood ornaments. All of these different car companies were competing to design the most luxurious or the fastest or the coolest car so that you would go and buy it and they had some really incredible detailing to them and the hood ornaments is such a good snapshot of that time in history. But this is from a 1953 Chevy Bel Air. There's a lot of really great resources online to help you figure out what car they're from and how old they are because there's a huge collector's base for these 
hood ornaments. It's actually hard to get them for a good price. It's not in great condition. This particular one is really not worth that much. If you can find some of the more figural ones that actually look like, you know, some of the Art Deco women that are posing on the hood of a car very dramatically, those are worth a little bit more. This one is not worth that much, um, but I just had to have it and for $12 you can't really go wrong with it. And the last thing that I found kind of made the day and also ruined the day. I found this incredible spoon. I know it may not look like a lot to you guys, but this is actually a native Northwest Coast feast spoon, which is kind of incredible. It's really, really hard to find something like this. The majority of these that you're gonna see have like really incredible hand-carved handles. Sometimes this is made out of horn and has some really cool hand-carved detailing to the bottom. This is super old and to find something like this in an antique shop is amazing. They were asking $95 for it this particular dealer allowed you to make offers, which I think is actually really awesome. I made an offer for $70. The dealer accepted that. It's really, really hard to find old native Northwest Coast spoons like this. Maybe you're noticing that while I'm finding this, it's in perfect condition. There's nothing wrong with this spoon whatsoever. When we're looking at it today, there's a huge gash right here in the front. Guys wanna know how that happened? This particular antique shop is kind of amazing because you don't have to carry anything around with you at all, ever. There are people literally going up and down the aisles asking you if you need help, asking you if you need to see something. You don't have to carry anything. They'll take everything up to the front. So when you get up there, all of your stuff's in a nice pile and then you can just pay for it. When I gave my incredibly rare Northwest Coast spoon to this guy. Okay, I'll take it up front for you. Not a big deal at all. I'll just uh, put it in your pile. Later on. Oh, hey. Um, did you still want that spoon? Why wouldn't I want that spoon? Um, well, I dropped it and it, uh, collected a little bit of damage. Sir, it made it from somewhere in the Northwest Coast all the way down here. It has survived a hundred years of feasts and feeding. You had it for five minutes. And this is what happened. Like I was crying inside for sure. Definitely tears were falling out of my heart. I kept it together here. I was falling apart here. I still bought it because you know, it's still really incredible, but it definitely put a damper on my day for sure. So that was my Saturday afternoon. I ended up doing my favorite thing for a Saturday afternoon. Nothing to me is better than going to an antique shop and finding some really amazing things. So I wanna hear from you guys. What is your favorite Saturday afternoon activity? Sit out on the porch with a nice glass of Chardonnay or maybe you like to put in a movie and pop some popcorn. So leave your comment in the comment section below. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, make sure you do it now so you don't miss future episodes. And as always, Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.